Hello and welcome to the Horseshoe Casino here nearby, nearby Louisville, Kentucky and the 19th annual Derby City Classic. There are hundreds of pool players and fans gathered from all around the world for nine ball, banks, straight pool, one pocket and this event, 10 ball, played on this beautiful five by 10 diamond, 20% bigger than a nine footer and ladies and gentlemen, it has got 16 of the finest players in the world. This is the Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge here at the Horseshoe. Are you guys ready here in the arena for some amazing pool? I know they're ready at home, so let's meet the players. First off, world nine ball champion, world straight pool champion, sponsored by Kamui, Cyclops, and Lukasi from Fulda, Germany. Let's hear it for the hitman, Torsten Homa. And our competitor, world eight ball champion, world cup of pool champion, four time member of Team Europe, sponsored by Predator and Neo360.com from Blackpool, Carl, box office, boys. Our referee from Sacramento, California, Mr. Ken Schumann. Okay, gentlemen, good luck to both of you. Please go ahead and lag for the first break. This is a race to 11, rack your own, winner breaks. It's a 40 second shot clock with one extension per rack. And at this time, it's my pleasure to send it up to the booth to Mark Wilson and Hall of Famer, Danny DiLiberto. Hey pool fans, this is the Derby City Classic Bigfoot Challenge and yet another powerful matchup, boys versus Homan. My name is Mark Wilson, alongside here with the expert analysis will be Danny DiLiberto. Danny, another powerful matchup, like I said. Uh, what do you see here? Well, first of all, 16 players, and they're all great players. They're all good matchups. So, Thorsten and Holman would be a big favorite if it were straight pool, but it's 10 ball, so I think it's a toss up. And how do you think the 10 foot table will play into this? Because you know well, the guys are unfamiliar. I know Thorsten Holman was practicing on this table for quite a while, so I think he's used to that. You know, I don't think the 5 by 10 is going to hurt either one of these guys. They came here ready to play. Yeah, on the scouting report, if you were to break down the analysis as we look on, Holman breaking here in the first track, race to 11, you would certainly lean towards Holman in terms of uh, defense, kicking, mental game, and probably the shot making, you'd lean towards Carl Boyce, although it would not be much of a uh, uh, deficit. Boyce is, or uh, Homan's pocketed the one ball on the break. Well, I told you, I, I like the fact that they treat it like a sport because people ask me all the time, is pool a sport? It sure is, you know, I mean, we had great players who didn't keep in good condition. And on the final day of a big tournament, they would get tired. Steve Miserec, for instance, you know, he got so out of shape that on a final day, he couldn't play three or four matches. It got him. You got to be in shape. Yeah, I completely agree. Fitness has to be a component of your truly legs, being an athlete. Your legs. If you're wobbly out there, man, it's tough to play. Holman's played a nice angle here to readily transfer to the five. Preserves the angle to easily hold the cue ball for the six, which is lime green next to the five along the long rail. Beautiful shot. Yeah. That was not an accident, folks. He went one rail and hit the nine, and that kept him there for the six. Confidently struck, used the nine ball, landed heavily on it to slow well, the progress. that's straight pool. That's why I said he has a big edge if it were straight pool. He's a straight pool player, but he can play the other games, too. Fired in the six ball like a bullet, yet the cue ball only traveled three feet to get to the center of the table. Those flat angles really uh, hurt you on a 5 by 10 because then you have to warp speed them in to get the cue ball to travel far enough, yet the pockets are unforgiving. The 
the chat. Perfect. Stop, stop. Bill Holman's long been a great, great talent. Oh, Pat and I thought he was the greatest straight pool player ever. He was running hundreds every every game. And Holman cruises through the opening rack with a break and run out, leads the match one game to zero. Of course, Pat and I are from the east, and that's straight pool territory. So I grew up playing straight pool, and so did Pat. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Pat Fleming. And, and Danny's alluding to a time that's gone by, because when I was even beginning, if you went to the pool room, every table was straight pool, and if we, you and I went there together, it was unspoken what we were going to do. You didn't say, do you want to play eight ball or nine ball all day? It was right. just universally understood we're going to play straight pool, and then if we have ten minutes left, we might include an eight ball or nine ball game. But we never had the respect for those. And we I thought think, straight pool was the game of pool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it was just everywhere, and talking about high runs and, and such. But I suggest that everybody out there should learn how to play straight pool first. It teaches you to pile. It teaches you cue ball control. I agree. Holman just left of center for this break. One, two, and three on the corners. Seven and four right behind the one ball. Parked the cue ball. Look at that. Completely there stopped. The one. one drops in. Where's the two? Yeah, two offers a shot. Yeah. Pretty wide open layout. If he can transfer from the two to the three, and it looks like it's doable. Yeah, I think he'll go two rails to the three into that right-hand corner pocket. He would kind of like to have the where the cue ball right back where it's at now, and then right. he can. That's where it'll go if he goes two rails. It's going in that path. And that would preserve the angle to get to the four next. Certainly don't want to get straight in on the three here. He can also have the other angle. It's just uh, he needs an angle one way or the other. Good job there. You got right where you said. No, well, you got the wrong angle. <laughs> you got straight. <laughs> you got the wrong <laughs> angle. <laughs> a straight angle. If, if that's an angle, I don't know. But anyway, he's straight You're is right. the point. So. He got the dreaded straight angle. Yeah. And it looks like he, at the best, he has to manipulate the pocket, which is it's unforgiving when you power up here. So. Yeah, I don't think he could. At this distance, tough to play part of the pocket. When the ball's closer to the pocket, you could do it. He did pretty well. Good judgment there. He can defend himself from here if he doesn't like where he gets, but to make an unforced error and miss that uh, three ball, that wasn't going to lead to anything and give away the first game that you just broke and ran out. This is a good judgment on his part. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get close to the three. He might have to go one rail and hit the nine again. No, the, uh, he's going to go for the five next. He's just going to roll that, this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I thought he would control the cue ball by going at the nine, but he got a little out of line there and tough to do much from that angle on the four in the side, and therefore he missed. Oh, did he get a rail? He did. Yeah, he yeah, did. It's bounce. frozen, in fact. A pretty that, good shot. That, yeah, good. Very good. The idea of not leaving the four ball next to the rail, that makes the four a big ball where there's more places that you can hit. Now it's reduced to just less than three balls widths. That was a pretty good job there. Well, it looks like he's going to have to do a two rail kick at this ball. He doesn't have the one rail, I don't think. Well, he's going one rail. He might billiard. I think he might be going two rails. Yeah, bigger ball. Well, well the, he went two rails, right. but not the way you thought. No, that is the way I thought. Oh, because really? it made it easier to hit. Trying to go one way or one rail, you go so close to the five that any kind of slight miss hit. I think he felt like he had a, a better way or a bigger target to hit two cushions there. Yeah, and you got a pretty big target. It looks like it's a round ball, but... It's a seven inch target if you're kicking. Great point. I 
I said seven inches because it's twice the diameter. And just to clarify, Danny's saying there's uh, almost two ball widths on either side plus the ball itself. So that's how two and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and a quarter, six and three quarters. Just short of that. Left-handed now by boys. That's another thing I recommend for beginners. Play with both hands. That'll take the bridge out of it in many instances. Nicely done. Routine 10 ball to tie the match at one apiece. Spawned from a great safety play by Carl Boys. We were concerned about uh, maybe Carl being a little bit lacking on the tactical side, but there he showed the propensity to make a good safety. So nice job there. Journeyman player getting better at his craft. Well, I'll tell you. What you're saying is true, and I blame it all on Akustats. You know, everybody is smarter that have Akustat DVDs. Don't you agree, buddy? Oh, you know I do. I have an enormous collection of them. Nine ball and six ball right behind the one. They're the ones that traditionally find the side pocket. The three and the two go around the table and oftentimes go into the corner pocket. They're nearest right now for cushions. Those are the most likely balls to go in. Here goes the nine on the side pocket. The one checked up nice. Power break. We watched Jason Shaw use a softer break last night to great right. effect and end up with a very similar result as to yeah, what we're looking at. He played at. position for the one in that same corner. It was remarkable, wasn't it, Danny? Oh, great. <laughs> great. If you get the a chance to get that video, player. right? If you get a chance to watch that video, yeah, you'll see folks, something special. Get that one. It was Jason Shaw against. Who was he the, against? The Greek player. Nikos Economopoulos. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Danny and I. We're over here. Our memories are uh, lapsing. <laughs> yeah, we didn't see a whole lot of them. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Bad shot. Yeah, no pause. A little pokey. Well, see that? They try to English the ball in. I, I recommend hitting the ball where it has to be hit with a center ball. That English overcut that ball. Didn't need English. Because the cue ball was going to the three right. no matter what. Right. Forget English, folks. That's very overrated. And I did a little research on that. Why do they call it English? Why don't they call it Polish or Russian or Italian? There was a guy named English that played exhibitions in the late 1800s. And that's how we got English. Hmm. I did not know that, but. That's an interesting point. Good shot. Solid. Well, I think he can go to the end rail now and, and go to the five. A little bit of right-hand English. He might just use straight topspin here. Just No, he did it. Yeah, yeah, just straight he didn't top. Need English. So just like what you said to avoid it, here he is choosing not to use it because there's no sense trying to do something that complicates the shot. If you if you lead you right at the five, just take it. You know, Torsten Holman's another guy that I think he has north of a four hundred ball run in straight pool. I remember right. Oh, He's yeah. one of those guys that, you know. I'm telling you, a few years ago, he just ran, I think, 125, 100. Every, every uh, match he ran over 100. And he knew how to hit the break shot. Pat and I were amazed how good he played. 
but unfortunately for him, we don't play much straight pool anymore. I think there's like one big tournament a year. Yeah. Well, you and I love straight pool, but it's not fan friendly. Uh, uh, apparently, it's you have to be fairly educated pool fan to enjoy that because there's no fast action. You don't win on one ball. Oftentimes, one player dominates the match. Well, that's why it's it hasn't gone big because you could play a match and never shoot and lose. Two games to one now. Holman takes advantage of the unforced error. Sponsors like to see their player shoot. Well, I think the fans, they want to see it like a right. fight in the middle of the ring, right. you know. You and I appreciate it. What, yeah. always, what always offends me is when we're playing nine ball or ten ball, and they say, well, let's make it call shot, and let's do this, and let's toughen it up. Then we had straight pool. I, I love straight pool. You know, Because every rule, they're going back to call shot. and. Uh, well, call. let me tell you, I call them suckers that aren't pool players. It's not derogatory, but... It's just a separation. Suckers all think you got to call all the balls. They think it's a professional way to play. They play eight ball, you got to call the ball. And if it hits the ball and goes in the pocket, it doesn't count and all that. That's not professional. Great point. Holman now breaking and leading two to one. Well, he's not making the ball right behind the one. That means he's relying on the 2 3 or a random, and he was not blessed with that. Well, he didn't Powerful make break, it. though. He made noise, that's all. Can't fault him on that. He, he controlled the cue ball and lodged a good blow on the rack, and then it's sort of up to the fortunes of the pool gods at that point. Little inside spin. Nice shot there by Boyce. Worked the, the balls cue ball. are all open. And worked the cue ball real close to the two, which would give him a multitude of options here. Good shot. Gonna hit the rail and bounce to the floor. Good shot there. Oh, and open up the, uh, move the seven out of the way. That'll and make that getting in the five. The cue ball also. Yeah. That was a very productive shot. You have to have all those tools in your arsenal if you're going to conquer the 10 foot table and, and play at a world class level. making the decision as to how he wants to play the seven to easily transfer to the eight. He deems it necessary to play the seven in the far corner pocket to his right as he stands now. Good shot. Yeah, I think he picked up the perfect little engine of an angle. He could stop it there too, even if he was straight, but looks like he'll be able to drift towards the eight here. But now no. it's just ball pocketing. Yeah, it's not really necessary because the eight to the nine is no problem. But you get close to the next ball, even if it's hanging, you'll have better control to get to the next ball. So, you know, because it's hanging, don't get a mile away. Right. You can control the cue ball better if you're close to that ball. Uh-oh. Yeah. yeah, he worked. We got him. He worked through the rack, and then there was a mental letdown there just that a little was. bit. He got good on the eight, but... This also happened in the previous rack, so that's two major unforced errors, and that's not going to fly when you're playing Torsten Holman. He will eat your lunch. And this is a big money tournament, so you can't afford to not get out from there. You got to get out. That's what Jason Hall, I'm Jason is doing very well, you know. Oh, Jason Shaw, I mean. Yeah. Yes. 
you know, you get out all the games you're supposed to and some of the ones you're not. Yeah. That's how you win tournaments. Yeah. Okay, 3-1 now, home and in front, based on a break and run out and two unforced errors by boys. Yeah, Holman is originally from Germany. He won a big eight ball tournament and he got 350,000 for first place. And he built a home in Jacksonville, Florida and that's where he lives now. Most interesting, look at those shoes, Danny. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> We're informed they're called red I don't soles. Know. Well, look at their sliding on the carpet there. <laughs> I don't know about that. But what do you think those cost? You can get a set of tires for your car cheaper. Those are $1,400 shoes. <laughs> Good Lord. I guess he's enjoying uh, Kevin Trudeau's money quite well. He built a house right. and bought some shoes. He's a gentleman, too. Oh, he's a great guy. I'm really not crazy about the shoes, but I've never been called Bone Bromel. Oh, okay. You Whoever know who that, that was. Is. Yeah, he, clearly he was a clothes horse. He was a, a, a fashion guy in Europe. Huh. Bone Bromel. Well, Omen breaking and leading three to one. Centered up the cue ball. Yeah, the ball right behind the one ball is not going in the side. It almost did, the nine and the five. Oh, something did go in. No, nothing did. It was a dry break. The boys is blessed with an offensive opportunity here. Can ill afford another lapse. Oh. I, I would not hit the uh, five ball with the one. Well, he, he's you going get to get out of play. No, he had to he hit the five it. ball. He did yeah. it, yeah. But look what happened to the oh. ball you used. A little unfortunate there. Um, that was the shot that he had to play. The the one straight in the corner was not an option. And so now he's, uh, well, this is a shot that's up in the air. He's going to try to back cut the one ball to half a pocket. The cue ball, if you slightly miss hit this, can scratch in the corner. So you have to be mindful of that, meaning that you may have to introduce some backspin. Yeah, this is, this is a tough spot here, Danny. And, and if you hit the nine... You're going to put it in probably a bad place. And uh, likely won't go in. The nines, I mean, you can easily miss now. This yeah. is a very small target with a scratch possibility. Well, he didn't move the nine much. Boy, what a great job. It that, was. That deserves a round of applause. That was a tremendous shot. And Knowledgeable audience recognizes that. Yeah. what an effort that was. Well, now he's back out of balls out in the open, and I'm not suggesting that they're easy. I'm just saying that he needs to manage them. A tricky position here. So he impact. handled it. Now, the rest of the rack plays pretty straightforward. Then cut on the four. Good shot. Seven ball is the blue ball. Lime green one is the six. The rest of the balls are the traditional colors. Well, I like the way you call the seven. Robin Egg Blue. <laughs> yeah, I guess if everybody's seen a Robin's Egg, you would know. But... Uh-oh. Uh, wow. Well, that's no, a bad hit. No, that was a dramatic miss. That wasn't that. It didn't rattle. It didn't even threaten the pocket from that range. He works through the rack and gets right to the point where he can cash it in. And then the, the, yeah. the rigor of that allows him a little mental lapse. Yeah, it takes a toll mentally. Second time he's done that. Third. That's... Third time. Oh, third. But meanwhile, that means six game difference. And uh, Holman's delighted to come to the table with layouts like this. 
then you got to be mindful that Holman doesn't get his break working because then he can really hurt you from these things. He can easily run into two or three games. Carl is now requesting something from our referee, Ken Schumann. I think he wants a pitcher of water, which there should be one. Anyway, <laughs> Holman takes advantage of a third unforced error, leads the match four games to one. See, without active stats, you wouldn't know that he wanted a pitcher of water. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to put that out of your mind. This will test your mental toughness now. You cannot dwell on the fact that you've given away that oh, much. Oh, yeah, that's yesterday now. Don't yep. take your bad inning into the next inning or it can't help you. Make believe it's a new day. Holman playing at 933 clip. Uh, That's pretty good. He's only pocketed uh, six more balls than Boys because Boys has pretty much mowed the grass and then Holman picks the flowers at the end of the rack. <laughs> That's a good one. So <laughs> mowed the grass and Holman has picked the flowers. But anyway, it's, uh, match is right on the verge of starting to slip away a little bit because Holman shows no willingness to want to miss or make mistakes. In three games is a pretty big lead in a table where you can't run string racks. I suppose it could easily be three games the other way. The only, uh, or at right. least two. Home and broken ran the first rack, and then the other ones have just been pretty much gifts. He made something this time. He's got a cut on, on the one, and the two is near a pocket, so position shouldn't be too tough unless you snooker yourself. Thin hit, and of course, when you have a thin hit, the cue ball is going to be hot, like Mark says, which means it's going to travel. But the two, fortunately, is dripping in a pocket. Good shot. Yeah, it Good was. control. And conservative, you know, he, there was almost no way to get hooked or not have a good shot. He'd be able to get his bridge hand down. Didn't try to do too much with that and work the cue ball too close to the two. Doesn't need to, but also no sense taking any a chance. Three cushion position here. How's his speed? Looks good. Yeah, he go one rail to the four now. Yeah, Holman's been very, very controlled. He's only made two errors thus far. Good shot. Now, does the five pass anything? He's looking at it. Our vantage points is just a little bit far, but it appears that it does. We'll certainly be able to tell by the way he plays position. Gonna dig down and go two cushions here. I'm right at the five. Yeah. How'd he do? Well, he avoided the side wow. pocket. And got the cue ball this close on, on angle. That Perfect. was a great shot. Great shot yeah. is right. Yeah, this is look at it gets on the right angle here to easily transfer to the eight. I mean, he's a, he this did is, it. This is it's surgical. not accidental, folks. When they fall on an angle, that's playing great position. When all you got to do is make the ball and you're on the next ball, and and he did that. Now he's got the angle where he can get close as he wants to the nine. Nine and ten are far apart, so you need to get close to the nine to get good on the ten. Very nice. Uses the second cushion to produce the proper angle and govern the speed. Yeah, we're going to see a good draw stroke now. Gorgeous. Perfect. Yeah, gorgeous. And the pressure mounts on Carl Boyce as uh, Holman breaks and runs out for the second time in the match. Now leads five games to one. And that's what I'm saying. An unforced error can easily end up turning into more than one game because these guys are that good. They can manhandle this table at times. 950 is his TPA. 38 balls pocketed. Two errors only. 
Yeah, we're going to have some great matches in this 10-ball tournament. In all seriousness, you know, Holman's played, you know, nice routes, and you never see him threatened. He hasn't made shots that you just uh, are eye-popping. But that's a testimonial to the great decision-making and execution that's put in here. And he did have a lot of help from Carl Boys. Yep. You ever seen... Look at that. Dorsey Holman's break performance, 600 at this point. That guy next to uh, Boys doesn't look too happy. It's he Tom might Karabatsis, be a backer. It? No, it's Tom Karabatsis, I think. Oh, yeah, from from the Chicago area. Yeah, I know him. I played him a lot. Tom Karabatsis. How bad did he beat you? Real bad or not too bad? <laughs> Danny won't comment. I gave him weight in straight pool. <laughs> well. I gave him weight in one pocket. <laughs> he might tell a different story, but anyway. Well, he'd be lying. I'm only kidding. I'm kidding, too. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's owned he, a number of pool rooms. He was right. Dallas West understudy uh, at one point. And he plays pretty good. Yeah. Well, I mean, he might be the best straight pool player in Chicago today. I don't know who else there is up there, but. He certainly Once plays again, a lot, we're but. talking about a game nobody plays anymore. And we're watching a game that uh, might be the future of the sport at the pro level. I think the 10-foot table, it kind of reminds me of like a pro golf course. You know, it's not like you just did something good at the public course. It's to conquer one of those pro courses is quite a bit of a different deal. Well, the big problem with the 10-foot table, mm -hmm. I mean, I like it. But pool rooms can't fit many tables in it. Not as many, you're right. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, commercial. Holman's won five games. Seven and six right behind the one. Those are the balls that have not been finding the side pocket with any regularity. Nine ball hangs up. That might have been in on day one. But he did not leave anything on a dry break for Carl Boyce. Yeah, and he, he snookered down to one. So just to, just to make my point, Carl Boys made an unforced error. Holman ran four balls, then Broken ran out, and now Carl's in here having to push out or kick for his life. It's so, a pickle game. Well, so for that one unforced error, it can easily turn into multiple racks is what I'm saying. Is Oftentimes you don't get left nice when you come back to the table. Well, I always tell people when you're pushing out, you're going to get the worst of it, so try to tie up a ball. That'll assure you getting back to the table. I don't think that was in his repertoire. I really like using a two-cushion shot here and banking it to the opposite end of the table and put to use the blocker balls in this fashion. That's what he's doing. Yeah, perfect shot. He used a bunch of balls to get them with. And even if you don't get them, you got distance. Distance. I mean, it's hard to play safe from here if you do hook Good them. Good point, Mark. Distance will get it, you know. If you snooker a guy, that's just a plus. Yeah, just good judgment. Yeah, he can hit it. Uh, I don't know if he's going to like it, he, is he? Yeah, yeah, he got him. Pretty good. From that range, that's a very, very good shot. Now, it's imminently hittable, but you you bought yourself probably another inning at the table. Now, because there's some balls hanging by the side pocket and corner pocket, Holman may go ahead and play offense from here. Just because it's very hard to kick safe anyway, so yeah. you might as well go ahead and ramp Just it up. Just make sure you hit the one. There's balls hanging. You might make, give the one a good ride. You're not going to hit this slow. It's not going to be luck if you it make something. It is hard, right. Nice good effort. Hit. Sent the 10 ball on its way. And then now he's blessed with at least leaving it difficult. Yeah, he did. All he left is combination. Well, I mean, it's not even a, there's caroms that are more available, but probably safe is what we're going to be looking at. Yeah, safe he it plays is. It safe. And of course, folks, we got a lot of shots that look like a jump shot, but you can't use a jump cue in this tournament. So if you jump, you got to use your cue that you're playing with. 
and that might be what he's going to do right here. He's definitely jumping. Good job. And there. Oh, he made took advantage. Ball. Yeah, that's just what we talked about, though. Yeah. Uh, you might take advantage of that. So it's not luck. It's just all calculated risk versus reward. Well, he doesn't have much here. No, he could go after the bank. But the three ball from the four ball sort of denies you from wanting to take on the bank. Because I like the billiard. I don't think, I think He's safety. He's shooting it. No, no, he this is much better. It, but yeah. There's no sense giving games away here on wild shots when you can do something this effective. Well, I don't think it would have been wild if he played the billiard because he's got a ball hanging. Big target. But it turned out pretty good if he gets a rail. Oh, good shot there. Yeah, very good shot. Uh, mm -hmm. Carl's showing some moxie here on the tactical side of the game. This is about the second or third time he's played a real good safety from an awkward spot. And that's what denotes good from great in terms of playing. Well, he's got a one rail kick at this ball. That's it. And that's why it was very good to get that ball past the side. Because playing players, you give him a kick at a ball hanging, he's going to make it. Now he just would like to hit it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be a huge success if you hit it without scratching. Yeah, he's got to hit it wide. And that's why he went wide. He missed the ball wide because of what you said. If he would have... Yep, there's... Oh, there he is. Nick Economopoulos yeah, well, looking he, on. He doesn't have any bruises. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm only saying that because he really got slaughtered yesterday. Yeah, he had to play well to win one game. He lost 11 to 1, but it wasn't really yeah. much of his uh, no. doing. He only went to the table a couple times. All right, Carl. You're going to have to make something happen. The 3 and the 4 will be the trick. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. He's looking at the combination, but it isn't like they're close together and the four is a little far away from the pocket so he doesn't have anything real good to look forward to yeah you you really need to fall right on angle he did not fall right on angle here well, so do you go billiard the uh, nine ball i mean and shoot the combination i don't oh boy <laughs> you got to stay at the table you don't you're losing by four games he played oh, safe. He didn't yeah. like it. Good shot. Good shot. Yeah. No sense taking on a wild shot that wasn't there. Alex Pagulain, he plays one of the next matches. He plays uh, Kazakis. The next match, yeah. yeah. Alex Pagulain, Alex Kazakis up next. He's a very colorful player. Folks, you got to watch that match. The only pool player I ever knew that has a maximum in snooker. Yeah, I watched it. I was there when he did it. He won the Canadian National Snooker title two years in a row. Nice hit there. But the cue ball went right on through the three into the corner pocket for a scratch. I think, uh, I believe Torsten Holman is now on two fouls. Not that the three foul rule will come into play here. Good speed. This is a little tricky. You want to make, you want to make the five ball. Good speed.
Carl changing his bridge went from the table bridge up on the rail. Well, he's in danger of winning his second game. Displaying some superior tactical ability here. He took something from nothing and got himself back in the match here. Five games to two. Three or four really astute safeties were played in that rack. Back to the match yesterday. Kind of not Mopolis just had more air time there than he did in the match. Right. Just about to begin with Carl Boys breaking and trailing. Two games to five. Five and eight ball right behind the head ball. Four ball went in. He's going to get a nice shot on the one. A pretty open layout here, too. Nice break, Carl. Yeah, nothing bad can happen here because the two is near the pocket. If he happens to make the one and the three. Slow down, cue ball. Look at that. Looks tough from here. It is tough. And he had, you know, really he had six feet of air, a room for error on that speed wise. Yeah, and he bad went. speed. So. That's an error badly. Yeah. He doesn't get out of here. He's going to really look back. And that's going to be a disappointing point in the match. Because he was just now clawing his way back in. It looks like he's going to try to take it on anyway. No, he's playing safe. No, he's trying to play it. He did play it. Good shot. Good recovery. Well, he was close enough to hit that ball then as he did. I call it hitting the paint. Of course, we don't paint the balls. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know if you knew this, Mark, that originally the rails were not rubber. They were stuffed with cloth. I did know that. You really had the man up to play bank pool on those tables, too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about bank pool. Uh, Carl's going to have a tough time reaching this. He switched around left-handed already. That's why I say play both hands, folks. This is one of the reasons he would have had to use the bridge other than that. Nice shot. Yeah, and he's got the good angle to get off the rail drawing this. He's going to draw it. James Jones, the table 35. James Jones, the table 35. Good speed. Mm-hmm, yeah. Other than the minor position hiccup there early in the rack, it's be a real solid break and run out. Carl Boyce now trails three games to five. Yeah, he's in the match now for sure. And that's not a bad T 
TPA 854. No, and, and that was all built from a series of nice safety plays in that previous rack that enabled him to win that one and then break and run out. Because the match was right on the verge of maybe slipping away at that point. Bottle of water, sip. Carl Boys, one, two, and three on the corners, four and eight right behind the one. The eight ball Coach found the mark. The cue ball. Yeah, good power. Eight ball found the side pocket. Position one ball. for the one. Pretty open layout here, too. Except for the ball on the spot. <coughs> Which ball? The 10 ball, but it's all right. Oh, yeah, the 10 ball's right where it started, isn't it? It yep. moved. <coughs> nice shot there. Should be able to draw over one rail. Able to hold the ball. Yeah, he got a little thinner than he wanted. Now he's going to have to hit rails. <coughs> Can't just kill it. No, I think it's just two rails, and kind of where his bridge hand is now would be ideal for the cue ball. Well, then the pie ball enters the, the game. Oh, he hung it up. Yeah, bad stroke, too. He, he got up too quick. Uh, you hate that. You break and run out, and now yeah. you potentially give it right back to yeah. a man that's already leading. This is one of those position shots. It's not that easy. I don't know if he can cut this in and avoid the point and just drift the cue ball down along the long rail. You don't have to do a lot. I don't think you'll see him send the cue ball. Well, he is yeah. drawing. No, he's drawing. I think he is trying yeah. to do something with I, it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have tried to do anything because the four is easy enough. Yep. And the five is not far away. He'd like to draw back a diamond or so here and play the five in the side pocket right past the seven. Well, he's going forward so he'd be able to play it on the other side. There we go. That's a nice shot. That was a big game for boys. He would have been one game out of it. Now he's liable to be three out of it again. Watch out. Thorsten Holman on the tour, known as the Hitman, or also known as Toasty. Right. <laughs> yeah, Toasty is his name. Work through these balls. Now he's just going to pull the cue ball back an inch or so. And a very routine 10 ball now. Perfect. This will be Holman's sixth win. 6-3 Six is our score. He didn't take long to get those off. No. Nope. Nine thirty nine clip he's playing at a solid pool. Boys, respectable at eight thirty. Yeah, but boys gave away a bunch of games. Yeah, he could easily I mean he he's could a, have been ahead. He's he's easily uh could be playing up around nine hundred himself because he, he, he made all the hard shots and then gave a couple racks away that he really shouldn't have.
thousand dollar entry fee in this event. Sixteen thousand added. That's pretty nice for sixteen players. going to drop. No, it did hang. Oh, it did drop. Oh, it looked up. <laughs> yeah, home would have preferred had it stayed up because now it looks like, well, maybe he has access to it too. It looks like it might be rail first. Can he get by the seven and three, go rail first on the two? That would be it's the best tricky. deal. Yeah, it looks, it looks that way. Hard to tell from here. I think he's got a kick at it. That's what I mean, real for. Oh, you mean oh. kick the other way, you're saying? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Unless he wants to mass say it, but then you might lose the cue ball. Yeah, it's hard to tell what he has from here. It's definitely going to be tough for trying. Oh, yeah. He's mass saying. Yeah, and it's got the wrong spin on it to let it go up for position on the three. It won't go around He's the table. He's going to have a long shot on the three if he makes this. Oh. He hit it and it didn't go. <laughs> That would have been tough to do. Yeah. Amazing that ball didn't fall. <laughs> well, Carl comes to the table with a pretty nice open layout here. Inside position here. Oh, yeah, two cushions. I don't see any problems here. Oh, he, he had to go and check the number on the Robin's Egg Blue. He's unfamiliar with the TV balls. They don't use the color sequence on the other tables. It used to cause us some problems, too. You remember, Danny? <laughs> it still is. Yeah. Thank God you're here. Because you corrected me a few times. Well, and uh, it used to bother me too. I would make mistakes, but got it down now. This is the shot he missed. Not this time. Don't get over the 10. No. He's going to have to hit the end rail now. Yeah, you overhit that shot a little bit. Yeah, I don't think you want to shoot this in the corner. Good shot. Carl Boys takes advantage of the opportunity there. Trails in the match now, four games to six. Pretty nice TPAs there. TPA, that's total performance average for anyone that doesn't understand. 941 versus 852, what does that mean? Think of it on a scale of 100, 94 to 85. Going back to our grade school days, that would provide a B oh, grade yeah. for boys and an A <laughs> grade, maybe even an A plus grade for Homan. Seven and four right behind the one. Those are the balls that find the side pocket. One, two, and three on the corners. Seven 
Seven ball found the mark. Here comes the one ball over by the corner pocket. All was right in the Carl Boys camp now. Good open shot at the one. Gonna have to stun the cue ball out, looks like, or is he going forward? Oh, looks he's like gonna he's... stun it. He's coming back a little. He had to stun it like a bullet. And <laughs> cue ball just traveled the diamond and a half. Now he'll have a good angle on the four to get to the five. We haven't mentioned the 40 second shot clock, but we are using one. I think yesterday. It came up once. Nobody got ball in hand, but we had an extension, I think, once or twice. Yeah, he's going to go two rails. Each player gets one extension per rack. It automatically clicks over to the extension should you exhaust your first 40 seconds. The second time it happens, it'll be a foul. And 40 seconds truly is enough time. Uh, sure. Ninety-nine percent of the time, even for slow players, that's enough time. Just keeps the pace of the match going. Yeah, he's in good shape here. One more time, he can be one game behind. that one <laughs> once again I don't like just getting straight in on the nine and drawing it I like the three railer from the nine to the ten so bounce out leave a cut no I don't care for this might be okay but I, I think the three-railer is more consistent. Good chat. Good speed. Yeah. Well done. Break and run out, Carl Boyce. It's just one game behind now. 6-5. This is called the Accustats Arena. And one of Pat's workers, my good friend Billy Gibbs, designed it. Did a great he's job. Not well. That's Sorry why to hear he's that. not here. Yeah, we miss you, Billy. Get well and get back. Boys breaking here. Game number 11. Or game number 12, I'm sorry. Well, he didn't make anything. Yeah, he made one. Did he? Yeah. He well, doesn't have a great shot. Away. No, he doesn't. We're going to see some safeties here. I like banking the one towards the two. 
and pull him behind the four, and you got a wall of balls to get him with. Make it towards the two, boys. Yeah, he's not sure what he wants to do yet. I didn't safe. care for that chat. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be good. Well, mercifully, he got behind the seven. He did, but I, I didn't like that because distance didn't enter. He was traveling the cue ball a long ways to use to introduce the nine ball. I think he got a little fortunate that he snookered the uh, yeah, human. Yeah, I think we all know that. But that's pool. This would be the backdoor option. Well, he's got a kick. He'll hit it. But what happens after that? I think we'll just see him kick it where it might go to the end rail and up behind the two and try to use the seven to stop the cue ball over there. This type of a fashion didn't no work good. out. No good. No, but that's all he could do. Tried to play a shot from there. Oh, he didn't want to hit the two. He overcut the pocket a bit, and that uh, didn't contribute to his success rate on that shot. Big, so big game for him too. He could tie the match up. Yeah. But now he snuckered himself. He did it. You know, this is not bad luck. Very true. Just have to try to hit this, and uh, you're gonna have to take whatever happens. Legal hit, open shot for Toasty. But how do you get to the three? Uh, I think you just roll this in and just accept the three as is. I don't know. It's not that straight. It's got a little angle. You're gonna bounce. Right. He recognizes that. I don't think he can power up and play something. I think he's got to take the shot. Whatever it is, don't miss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And play safe if you have to, if you don't yeah. like where you get. Make sure you make the two. Don't be cute with this ball. Yeah. And, and look at you. Funny uh, angle. Yeah, on our overhead, you can definitely see. Even if he chooses to play safe on this shot, I would not fault him. He's playing offense, though. Is he going to get there? I don't think so. No, a little weak. Well, I don't know. We got a cut on it, but yeah, yeah, a little harder. But you couldn't shoot that angle real hard. Pocket wouldn't have taken it. And had he gone much harder, if if he bumps the six, he'd be golden. If he goes past the six, he'd have been in trouble. This way, he can protect himself. So I can't fault his shot selection. I like to make an effective safety now. He's going to try to freeze him. Well, I, I would like to say good enough, but... I don't think it is. It isn't. When you want to snooker a guy... Well, maybe here on the overhead you can kind of see. Yeah, uh, he's he doesn't have a shot, but... He has to kick, then that was yeah. a good shot from well, where he was at. If you freeze him on the eight, he wouldn't even have had a kick. But that was a long way to travel the cue ball, and then the three ball would have gone further, perhaps. The cushions. Good hit, but he's not going to like it. Okay. He left a shot, but it was it's not a hanger for sure. No, no, it's got a little challenge to it. It's It's one of those circumstances that you figure he will get it. But it's better than ball in hand by far, and it uh, puts a little pressure on him. Going to have to bleed off some energy to make this ball.
Oh, what a good oh, shot. Oh, man. That you made it look shot. easy. <laughs> good shot, Toasty. In good position. Another good shot. Just draw it back now. They kind of poked that a little bit. He didn't quite get the effective spin that I was yeah. thinking he was going to use. Yeah, he, he would have liked to got straight in on this ball. Because then it would have been easy to get to the eight. Now he's got to hit rails. Well, and you're going to have to check up the cue ball, but it's a little thinner. I don't know if you can just roll it. I don't think so. He's going to hit rails. Well, he hit rails, and he got good on the eight. Yeah, that's not bad from where he was. Now all he has to do is cinch this in the side, and position is automatic. Just the shot is not automatic. <laughs> the position is. Yeah. Guess he's going to try to just glide the cue ball just past the 10 and then back to the end rail and back up on the other side of the 10 for the 9 on the side. Yeah. I don't think he's going to dig down and draw. No, he doesn't have much to do but make the ball. Right. Position is automatic. He's taking his time. He recognizes that this is definitely a good test. This is the first time he's used his extension in the rack. He's into his second 40 seconds. With good reason, this is probably the deciding shot. Chose to use the 10 ball as a blocker ball rather than play the, the little bit of stun. He now, almost made the 10. Yep. But now he's got a cut on the, on the 9. He's got to go... And rail back where he is right now. Good shot. Oh, he almost missed it. ball got away. He hit it way heavy. Uh oh no good. Side pocket. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the side straight in, it yeah. looks like. He made it straight in. Beautiful shot. 7-5 is our score. Home and in front and breaking. Great equipment, and that's a testament right there because mm -hmm. if that ball rolls off, you're not going to make it. Especially diagonally will be the big roll off if it's off. And this is a one-piece slate. So they worked hard to get this perfect, and it is perfect. Take a look at the rack track there. Well, you know, that was really the first rack that you really saw Holman have to scramble and use all his tools in his arsenal because he's maintained pretty good position throughout, pretty good control. But I got to say that the position on the 10 was very fortunate. Because if that ball gets a little off, that shot is much tougher. Yeah. 7-6, right behind the one ball. 7 on the mark. Here's a 1 down here by the corner pocket. Four balls clearing, so he has an open shot. He's in good shape here. Problem might be the three. Needs an angle on the two to fall on the three in the side. I don't think it goes many other places. It's hard to tell from here. Maybe he can drag the cue ball down along the long rail and play the two past the nine as well. Or he can stun it out to where the cue ball's at now. 
Starting it out. Nice shot. Nice shot. Close oh, enough he's now. Got an angle now. Close enough now he can do some things if he's uh concerned about the three past the nine. I don't think it goes past the nine, but I think it does. You think uh, it yeah, does? Yeah, he seems content with this. He's we'll we'll know if he follows across the table to play the three in the side or corner, or if he chooses to play it past the nine, we'll know it goes amply. Yeah, he didn't look great with the bridge there, Danny, he his form. He didn't use it real well, but apparently the three does pass the nine. But now the eight's introduced into the picture here with the cue ball, I'm saying. So that adds complexity to this shot. Well, if he makes the three, I don't think there's a problem getting snookered on something. Certainly passed. Mm -hmm. Every he, the shot into the side pocket then means he has to draw back to get about the same shot on the five. I he think you got to shoot it in the corner, Mark. Yep, maybe he he, he certainly he needs the cue ball if he's going to play it in the side right where the cue ball's at now. He would like to draw it back. Maybe not quite that much just because he didn't want to take the risk. Yeah, he's shooting it in the corner. Because that shot is dangerous, shooting inside. All right. He's a great shot maker, so... He did shoot it in the corner. Oh, that was a good shot. Very Position good. Position got away from him a little bit, <laughs> And he was definitely concerned. He was up and off that, and the cue slashed to his left. And he was delighted it went in, but he's not delighted with exactly how the cue ball lodged up near the end rail. Yeah, but nothing can go bad if he makes the ball. You know, he's going to have a shot. But don't miss. Well, and the cue ball's traveling away from the six and going to go down table. You could, yeah, he's jacking up to avoid the eight. He doesn't want to get hooked. You're right. If he just shoots it naturally, he might go into the nine and snooker himself. Or be over the top of one of those two balls, too, depending upon how it enters the pocket. But at this stage, I think just don't miss. Just, well, we, that's like a pitching coach going out saying throw strikes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well. The guy's trying. They, he doesn't want to miss. He's not trying to miss. No, he'll make this. A tough shot. Good shot. Good shot there. Had to let the cue ball get away just a little further, but now this is manageable from here, and that yeah, was a good gonna, judgment. Yeah, he's going to go three rounds to the eight. They have to rely on the execution from here on out. Pretty good. Real good. Now you cannot have that mental lapse or breakdown where you've got through a tough series because there's still a couple challenges left here to this rack. Good job there. A lot of fight in this guy. Perfect. Yeah, he had some problems here, mm -hmm. but he got through them. Uh, definitely the best rack of the match so far as Homer captures this. Eight games to five. That was his third brick and run out of the match. And he uh, shoot 943. That's tough to beat. That was one of those racks where I think it should have been worth two games. If uh, Even with the <laughs> Soviet judge. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, you would need some good judges. <laughs> he had a lot of problems in that rack. You want to come with a degree of difficulty? To get more than one game on one game. I don't think it's going to happen, Mark. Well, I was just alluding to the fact that he did a lot of good things there, really. Really what my point was. He he earned that game, Danny. He sure did. Pocketing. And the, the decisions. And decisions. Yeah, the decision and then the execution. I mean, the whole thing. It was beautiful pool.
you got to train in a lifetime. you got to be devoted to be able to execute like that. And, the, you know, when you throw all those tough decisions in there, and then there's a li- likelihood that there's ambiguity associated. Like, should I? Should I? I don't know. Maybe they'll go over here. Wait a minute. It looks like Carl Boys went to sleep. He dozed off, yes. <laughs> Last year, Scott Smith was presiding over this tournament. He dozed off as the official. That was comical. Home and breaking and leading 8-5. to five. Uh, Dry break. Something going 3, 6, 9, 10. No. Dry break. Well, he's got a cut on the one, but the cue ball is going to fly all over the place, so I don't know. I think he's better off playing safe. He and does he, too. He agreed. He didn't execute the safe though, and no, he left the cut on it. Yeah, that's one of those that you're used to seeing them make it a little tougher than this for the incoming player. And while well, this is not an easy shot, but in position's not easy. That's the whole thing here. Right. Tough shot, and and the cue ball is not going to be controllable <laughs> to get to the two. I don't know if he's going to get on the two, shooting the, the one. Part one is make the one. Well, he's definitely shooting at it. And he uses extension right here. Yeah, he knows it's not easy here. He jumped up here. Look at it again. Yeah, it all was just too tough. <laughs> Carl Boys don't mind. He didn't hit it poorly either. He no, he it. hit it, good, but he had to hit it too hard. Softer that ball went in, but then he couldn't get position. <clears throat> He wants to be aggressive and air on the aggressive side. He might have chosen a safety there. You hate to leave the table open, but you also hate to turn away good scoring opportunities. That's always that delicate balance. Do I go or do I not? Still a lot of work here. That was nice speed. Good good, yeah, good shot. Well, maybe he could move the nine. That's going to be a problem, eight, nine. I think you could go into the nine here. No, he didn't. Well, if he can fall on the right angle, the seven will lead to the eight. If you want to yeah. further develop the nine, you can at that point. Yeah, like I, I would have gone into the nine, but that's why I'm up here doing commentary. Uh, oh, the ball. no, 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 no. Let's see. He got the right angle to develop the nine here and get on the eight simultaneously. And this is one of those hanging balls with this same type of a straight-in shot that makes playing position from this ball very treacherous. It was not an easy layout, but... He needed to win that. He's three games behind. He can fall four games behind. Yeah. yeah a, but I still think the eight to the nine is a little bit of a problem. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you get the wrong angle on the seven, then it's a real problem. Because then you got to travel the cue ball even if you pocket the eight to get to the nine. Nice stroke. It's got the wrong angle, of course. <laughs> well, that's a good shot from where he was at. It was a good stroke, though. Yeah. <laughs> but no. he didn't get good. That's what I'm saying. Uh, now it's going to be tough to fall on the eight. Yeah, it's going to be tough to fall straight enough on the eight that you don't have to travel a long ways with the cue ball to get to the nine. I which, think you got it. Uh, see, he's shooting it in this pocket. I think you shoot it in the other pocket and go into the nine. He did that with pretty good control. Well, he needs more control now. 
eight to the nine. Don't hit any pockets with the cue ball. Right. You'll just go straight across two cushions and try to land the cue ball back where the eight is now. I would go forward. I would go forward two rails. Overcut it just a smidgen. With pocket found, He's them, get found good. the pocket. Yep. Very good. He'll be off the cushion too when he shoots the ten. Good Pretty shot. Good. Yeah, real good shot. This was not an easy layout. And Holman having his medal tested here. <laughs> Just threw a couple tough racks. He passed the test. Yeah, he came here ready to play. And like I said, he's in good condition. 9-5 is our score. You know, when you look at his fitness level, just from appearance's sake, that contributes to easier moving the cue straight, as you don't have to involve, like, any jerky or twitchy muscle movements. You can be smoother with it, and I think that really is something that's maybe understated, but very important. You're right about that, and it's very important to be in physical shape because you're in good mental shape if you're in good physical shape. And conversely, yeah, if you're fit, then it's easier to stay less fatigued and focus longer periods of time. Right. When you're playing and you have those fleeting thoughts to your mind, like, ooh, I'm tired. <laughs> you know, that naturally hinders your performance. Not, you can't get tired in this, in this sport. Well, dry oh, break yet again. Wait, oh, the three was going to try to go, but it didn't. He left the shot on the one, but it's not going to be easy position to the two. Looks very straight. Like Danny said, looks be a pretty good test here to get any kind of position. And the one is far enough away from the pocket that you can't play part of the pocket to get the right angle. And looks like you'll be a little jacked up over the side pocket at the very least. I he's, think he's going to have to be satisfied with a long shot or even play the combination 210. Yeah. He's playing the 210 here with safety it, as they. Yeah, there's safety here. Good decision, not an easy shot. But it's kind of free. The cue ball is going to go towards the eight. I don't think he's even playing that. Yes, he is, but he didn't hit it very well. He's got to hope the 10 gets over the 2. It does not. So now, Now Holman he just comes. has to make the 2. Yeah. No position to play. Even if you end up landing straight in on the 3, you have to be willing to accept that in an effort to all out make sure you make the 2 ball here. Yeah, you're right. Even straight in on the 3, look where the 4 is. 3 to the 4 is not a problem. Just don't miss. And I'm not pulling for anybody. I just want to see good pool. Yeah, right. And, and we're also trying to educate the thought process here of the pros. With and educate the public. I like that. Good shot. Even though he got straight in on the three, he can bounce a little bit. The four is not tough position. Right. But where do you want to get on the four to get to the five? Because the nine enters the game here. He's looking at just cruising the cue ball over to the long rail and just come up table near the five and then use draw to come back. This is another tough layout. He's yeah. got through a couple of them, but You're right. this one's tough also. The other choice is to try to stun the cue ball to come up table to the center of the table. But then the transfer from the four to the five is, is tricky as well. Yeah, and, and, and stunning the cue ball here, you could snooker yourself on the four. Absolutely. Yeah, there's risk associated either way you go, and then it's either on this shot or the next one. 
He's going to take it on the next one. No bargain here. No. That was the shot you had to... You, I think it's the best shot. It's just that it's the uh, lesser of two evils. Is he the nine enter? Yeah, he snuckered. Yeah. I knew the nine was going to be a problem. Well, good call, Danny. That was accurate. Almost seemed like he tensed up a little bit with his grip hand there. He did not get effective spin on it. You got to watch his feet. Because if at any time both feet are off the floor, it's a foul. Even lining up. Get a good look at his red sole shoes here again. I don't I don't like this. I don't think he's going to be no, successful. Jumping on tippy toe. Just oh. hit the ball. I agree. He made it. Look at that hit. <laughs> but he snookered again. Wow. People are clapping, and they're not happy because he snookered. It was a great shot. Right. Yeah. He, he did the best he could do from where he was at. Yeah. <laughs> those shoes are amazing. Never heard of a $1,400 pair of shoes. Are those diamonds in there? <laughs> I, I guess they are. I don't know. A thief will cut off his legs to get them. <laughs> <laughs> got to hit the ball. He's got to reverse it. Needs reverse here. He didn't hit the ball. Five. No legal contact. Carl Boys is going to get to the table one more time. That's one layout Holman couldn't overcome. Well, boys is going to get lucky to get an inning here and, and still be in the match. 6-9 our score. Carl Boyce cashes that in. Okay, eight and five, right behind the one ball. Eight ball rim, the side pocket. Is the three going to find the mark? No, Nothing. looks like a dry break oh, look at this. and an open layout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Carl chagrin. Easy shot. Easy shot to start with. You got to go between the four and eight to get to the two. He did that. Oh, the, he caught a little of the point. It changed the angle a bit, but it's not going to hurt him. Bumped heavy into the 10. That makes it a little trickier. I didn't think he had to go that route. I thought he could go one rail to the three. He was nodding his head back and forth as if he thinks he made the wrong decision and thinks your choice was better. Yeah, I think it was too. I think he recognizes that now. 
It might be too late now. Well, it is too late now. But <laughs> Just don't miss. Where does the four go? It goes in the corner, but you can't hold it for that. You're going to have to get a longer shot on the four. Tougher position, too. That's a good recovery, no matter how he gets on this. It looks like he's going to be... A combination. Yeah, somewhat rewarded. Not bad. He's close enough to make the ball. He'll have to shoot the four in the corner if he makes the combination. Don't get the nine in your way again. That's over. Still got a little trickiness here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, nothing easy on the 5x10 with tight pockets. Good hit. Oh, good hit. And he didn't get snookered. Yeah. Fortunately, he's, tough. he's mentally tough to endure all the trials and tribulations these shots present. And like I've been saying over and over, he's in good physical condition. So he can handle all this. There we get a he got lovely on, chip. He got on the 50-yard line here. Nothing is easy. But the position to the eight is no problem. Just make the ball. Gonna draw it to the end to the side rail, I believe. Nicely done. He's got a little bit of an angle to get to the nine, but it's a tricky layout. Everything was a little tough here. You gotta make sure you don't draw it to the side pocket. Yeah, and still, it, here it is, just eight inches out of the pocket, but still got to make a good shot here. See where he was going? It was yeah. going in the side pocket. Came a little short. I'd rather leave it a little longer and come a little further across myself. In Grady's terms, that might be a great act of cowardice. Yeah, we all miss Grady. Good shot. Fortunate hit. He's straight in the corner. We were talking about Grady Matthews, the professor. He created the uh, bank ring game. Good nice shot. shot. Nice shot. Another tricky run out. And he got on the hill with that. 10-6 is our score, Holman. Quite a performance, isn't he? That's about three or four really tough scrambling racks in a row here. I think there's only one time he didn't complete it. Pretty good TPA. 924 at this stage of the match. That's excellent. That's above world class. Yeah, he's fighting hard. He might not have any of that 350000 left. <laughs> now, you know what? You, you can't do this for money because the effort that it takes to put it in there, it's not a pure enough motive. You have to actually love pool, and the money follows. Yeah, you're right. Is this going to be a dry break? It definitely is. Okay. Nothing easy here. I think the eight has got the one. Yeah, you come to the 10-foot table hoping for something easy. You've actually come to the complete wrong place. He looked at it. Maybe the one passes the eight. It doesn't look like it does, but... No, he's looking at either safe or combination safe. And got away from him. He didn't, he didn't play it safe at all. Mm -mm. 
No, it's embarrassing to go down this way where you just hand the table over. You take a shot that wouldn't go and make it into a shot that will go and let it leave it for your opponent. And the rest of the balls are sitting pretty good. Good shot. Mm-hmm. He would have liked to get straight in on the two because now you got a glance. Pocket is in the way over there, which he overcame. He's all right. He's got a good angle now to go from the three to the four. The four is no problem because it's hanging. Just don't snooker yourself. That's it. Which he didn't. Still some work to do. Oh yeah, there's a lot of challenges here. Six to the seven with the nine and ten where they're at. Gonna have to do a good job in terms of executing here. Well, he got pretty good on the five. But like you said, the 10 is in the way. You know, you got to take whatever you can on the seven ball. Well, it looks like he needs to go to the center of the table here rather than try to go in between the long rail well, like and the nine. Like he is right now. Or, yeah, but that's a little far. I'd like to be a little closer to the center of the table. Is he going to get there? Oh, he got good on this. He did, too. Yeah. He got an angle and a pretty easy shot. Yeah, I think he will stun this across two cushions and just come out just short of the center of the table. And the angle on the eight will get him to the nine. And boys feels himself going. Great hit. Well, he sure was. Don't get straight in on the eight, because then you got more work. He's got a little angle, but not much. I think we're going to see him play the nine in the far corner pocket past the ten. Yeah. Yeah, that's less of a gamble. The it's, ten doesn't enter if you do that. When you're flat like this on the eight, it plays easier to control the cue ball, get it over near the nine, than trying to get it on top. That's what he did, Mark. Look at that Good speed call, control. Buddy. Look at that speed control. Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, he's feeling good. Yeah, this guy's cold-blooded killer here. Yeah, he is. Yeah, great player. <laughs> Over 900 TPA for the match. That's just an incredible performance. 931, is that what it ended up being? Yeah, that kind of shooting, except for Jason, <laughs> will win the tournament. A lot of people might look at it and say, well, Carl let a few games get away, unforced errors, but I would say more the uh, mental tenacity and strength of Torsten Homan was the deciding factor in that one. So on behalf of all of us here at AccuStats, Mark Wilson, Danny DiLiberto, so long for just a while.